What is up you guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm super stoked for today's video because it's an ahi catch and cook, which means I'm gonna take you through the whole process of when I caught the fish, when I filleted it, and then also how I cooked it up. I've been meaning to do this for a while, so I'm super stoked that today is the day, and so I will see you guys out on the water. Good morning, guys. I have a little bit different morning. We ended up finding a school of akule. So this is akule. They have really sharp spines, so I always gotta be careful. Whoa! Scary. All right, so I tried a sunrise or Kool-Aid to see if anything would bite right at the beginning of the day and nothing really happened, but heading into the bait spot, it's just over here to try to catch some Mopelu. The plan for today is just catch some Mopelu and head out deep. Oh, yep, there we go. Oh, frick, snagged. Oh, on your Mopelu? Yep. Yeah, they're shallow. I'm really hoping for Ono or for Shibi. Those are the ones I haven't caught in a while and I've caught a lot of Mahi lately, which I'm fine with Mahi, but I would rather catch some Ono and Shibi right now. Okay, I'm on. I just had a whole mess because I had three lines out. I was dropping on some Opelu in my Sibiki. It just was... Crazy. Anyway, I got it all good. I think it's a shibi. It's running really deep, pulling pretty fast. So let's hope. It is what I hope it is. Oh. Oh. Yep, yeah, definitely shibi. Big Shibi! Woohoohoo! Yes! See color! Check this out! Big boy. Well, not crazy huge, but it's definitely a good size for a kayak. All right, check out this shibi. <laughs> Yoo Oh, guys I freaking did it today I finally caught a shibi which is so sick my plan is now to do a ocean to table video so we've seen out here how catching goes down but now I want to show the filleting process and the cleaning process of the of the fish and then I'll do a pretty much a catching cook so some poke or maybe something else um, like ahi stop maybe ahi katsu actually Anyway, either one of those two, I'm going to try doing a recipe, so a full, like, ocean to table video, which I think will be pretty sick. So stay tuned for the rest of the video, and then you guys can see the recipe and how I clean and process the fish. Alright, it is cleaning time. size 
Okay, I'm gonna walk you guys through the cleaning process and talk about the steps that I use. Um, first, you open up the belly cavity so you can take out the guts. And the way I take out the guts is I begin an incision to take off the head. That way the guts and the head can come off together. So I did one side, flip it over, do the other side. And then I'm gonna take off the head now by bending it back and forth. And there it is, comes off. All right, so the next step now, um, I always like to have a clean table, so I rinse it all down, get the blood off, keep my knife sharp and my knife clean, and then you start making an incision in the skin, which will then provide a way for your knife to go through. So there we go, we have two loins, a top loin and a bottom loin. Got the top loin off, cut out the blood meat. There's some bones and blood meat in that middle section. Now we cut off the bottom loin. There we go, the first section's done. And now on to the next section. Cut the skin, makes a pathway for the knife later on. Sharpen my blade real quick. All right, cut the other side. Now cut the fillet all the way to the spine. Cut down the middle, top loin, good. Now to the bottom loin. Cousins helping me out. There we go. Bottom loin, cut off the belly meat. All right, fold it up, rinse off. And now it's time to cut the chunks off. So you have to separate the meat from the skin. So your knife's got to be really sharp for this. All right, so that's boneless, skinless ahi. Top loin, bottom loin. I cut off the belly meat. The belly meat has bones. It's also where the, if there's any heavy metals like mercury, they congregate in the belly meat for the most part. All right, cutting off more chunks. And that's it, it's all done. Now it's time to start cooking. All right guys, welcome to my kitchen studio. It's my first time doing something like this in here, but this is the cook portion of this catch and cook video. And today I'm gonna to be covering ahi katsu. All right, and step one for me is to put on my customized apron. Thank you, mom, Christmas 2021. All right, first off, I'm gonna show you guys the ingredients that I use for my ahi katsu. Um, I try to make it a little bit healthier instead of using standard uh, flour and other standard oils. And so I'll show you guys exactly what I use. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you guys is the oil that I use. Um, it's ghee, you can get it at Costco and it's really great, um, high heat, caramelized flavor, so that's, that's what I like to use. For panko, I just use regular panko. It's pretty hard to replace panko itself, so just use the same stuff that you find at the store. Well, the flour, though, that I use is different. It's this almond flour. Um, it's a really healthy alternative. Um, it's natural, and it doesn't have a ton of carbs like regular um, white flour will have. All right, so the next thing is eggs. Um, these are some that we actually got from our chickens that we have outside, so they're nice and fresh and organic, and use about you know, two or three depending on how much ahi katsu you're gonna actually be cooking. For seasonings, um, I really love granulated garlic. Um, you can also get this at Costco. I like to put this on the outside um, instead of using um, real gar garlic cloves because they tend to burn pretty easily. Another seasoning, lemon pepper, kind of a given for fish things. Um, this one's really good, I like it. It's from Trader Joe's, which we don't have here, so this is special import from the mainland. Last seasoning that I use is Creole seasoning. Um, I like this because it has some spices in it, but it's mostly just like good tasting salt. Um, so this is what I use to actually salt um, the katsu itself as I'm, as I'm preparing it. And then last but not least is the ahi itself. All right, so first up is to cut the ahi into the size steaks that we want. During the filling process, I already kind of get it in this nice triangle that I like. Um, bigger shibis and bigger ahis will have bigger chunks. Um, so this is the biggest steak I could get. For me personally, I don't like them too thick um, because they cook a little bit longer, which can sometimes burn the um, all the seasonings and the flour on the outside. So I like to do them just about an inch. Also, I always use gloves. It's just better grip on the fish and it just keeps the fish smell off of my hands. Okay, I got my steaks. Okay, the process for me now, I just put out this ponko um, on a plate. So I put, get the flour. I put it out on plates so I can do an egg wash. Okay, now I'm gonna break the eggs. Alright, 
I like to whisk these guys pretty good. For me, I try to get the eggs as fluffy as you can. Um, it just helps the um, egg wash stay on a little bit better and really mesh with the with the flour and the punk. Okay, should be good. Okay, so this is the part where I very carefully um, season the ahi steaks. I don't want to get a mess everywhere. Granulated garlic first. I like to cover, you know, about 60% of the of the steak with this. This is what I think packs the most flavor, honestly, is all this. And I'll do one side at a time. So granulated garlic, then the creole seasoning. This I just do like maybe 10% coverage. Um, and then you just do a just a dash of the lemon pepper. Cool, then you uh, flip them over and you do the other side. All right, this is the main part to the whole video is how to do the egg wash. Um, luckily for me, my father-in-law taught me a really good technique, which I think is pretty common, but it's just good to do it right. Um, so first what I do is dip in the egg. Not like crazy dipped or marinated or anything. And you wanna drip off the excess for that first one. And then you do the flour first. You do the flour, kind of press it down a little bit, make sure it covered, and then you do the other side. You wanna be as light as you can. I'm not using all my fingers, I'm just I'm patting it down also get you know the edges a little bit cool and then this one you got to be really quick on the egg wash let's get it really quick in there it's off some of the excess and then do the pump hole another tip is you don't want to leave the egg and the pump and the flour on a long time before um, you actually start cooking so you don't want to leave them in the fridge for an hour because it will get too soggy so you want to do this right before you cook almond flour Alright, those are some really good looking steaks. Pretty even and ready to fry up. Okay, so next part for the ghee, um, just scoop out some. For this much, I'm probably going to do about three, four tablespoons. Let's get this to a high heat just to get it melted. I think we're about ready. I'm going to do like a 60% heat or maybe 70. Okay. You don't want to crowd it too much because you don't want the oil to cool down. Maybe a little bit hotter. KTA. Okay, what I look for too is on the edges, you start seeing that like brownish cafe color. Once you start seeing that, it's probably time to flip. Yeah, that's the color you want. Okay, so let's check the bottoms now. Oh yeah. Perfect. I prefer my ahikatsu to be a little bit raw in the middle, pink in the middle. Now, this one's ready to start cooking the side. Just a quick little dab. It doesn't have to be perfect. The sides are always going to be kind of light unless you um, deep, deep fry them. I'll just get him out of here. He's ready. Alright, done. Do the next batch. Turn on the heat because now it's really hot. Okay, and the final step, got my rice already. I'm gonna use a couple more garnishes. This is just furukake. This is my favorite sauce right now. All of the bachans are really good. Um, this one's the yuzu one, the original's awesome. And then Japanese mayo. It's kyupi or kyupai, whatever. So we're gonna grab this piece. And then the order for this, zoom on here. The order for this is Japanese mayo, furukake, just a light layer. Put some on your rice, of course. And then some bachan sauce. All right, the ahikatsu is done. We got two katsu, some rice, some furukake, some garnish, um, all fried nicely, crispy golden brown. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys learned something about a little bit different way. So we'll see you guys next time. So stay tuned.